Well, back to our top story now, the uh, controversy over the Gaza flotilla attack. And to uh, discuss this more, I'm now joined by Michael Dixon from the Stand With Us organization designed to promote Israel's view of events, and Omar Barghouti from the Palestinian Campaign for the Academic and Cultural Boycott of Israel. Uh, to you first, Mr. Dixon, if we may, uh, many countries accuse Israel of a disproportionate use of force against activists. Would you agree with that? Well, let's look at what happened here. There were six boats trying to provocatively break the blockade. Their aim was to provoke. Israel made constant warnings to them to come in, take their humanitarian aid on shore, where it would be distributed to Gazans like it, humanitarian aid is every day. Warning after warning, they refused. Now, five of the ships were boarded successfully and peacefully. They came into Ashdod port and nothing happened. The final one, the sixth, had violent intentions. On board were protesters linked with a radical Islamist organization. They were armed with machetes and sticks and batons. Now, no peaceful protest, no peaceful protesters act in this way. And that's why the violence happened. It didn't have to be like this. And Israel gave them so much warning to bring the humanitarian aid in so that they could then send it through to Gaza with the rest of the humanitarian OK, well, let, let me stop you there for just a moment. Day. Let me put one it of those points to, like to our, our other guests. Hang on just one moment. Let me just put that point to Mr. Barghouti then. Uh, designed to provoke Israel, what would you say to that? Uh, I think Israel is uh, heeding the appeal of Moshe Dayan, a very famous Israeli general, who once said Israel must act like a mad dog too dangerous to bother. It has really become too dangerous to bother, but also too dangerous to ignore and thus the rise in boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel, Israel committed an act of state piracy, state terrorism, uh, against a uh, civilian ship in the high seas, in international waters. There's absolutely nothing that can justify this violent attack against the ship, especially that Israel is violating the Rome Convention for the suppression of unlawful acts against the safety of maritime navigation, and that was passed in 1988. There's absolutely no legal or moral justification. Israel is simply ignoring international law and acting as a pariah. Uh, Mr. Dixon, state terrorism, what would you say? I would say that any country would do the same. Why is there a bl blockade on Gaza? Because Gaza is currently under the jackboot of radical Islamists in Hamas. There is Palestinian suffering right now, and that suffering is under Hamas. Hamas is a radical organization which is the long arm of Iran. Now, Israelis in remember the days when they used to have peaceful relations with Gazans, where Israelis in the south of Israel would have working and, and personal relations with the people in Gaza. And Israel left Gaza for peace. Let's remember, they removed 9,000 people from their homes and said, here, shape your own destiny. Let's live in peace together. But isn't the Hamas suffering of Gaza caused by that, is that the Israeli population. blockade? And now people in Gaza... The Israeli blockade has to exist. Let me tell you why. Because goods have to be checked for security reasons. Hamas sm smuggled aid through uh, smuggled weapons through aid. We've had instances of smuggling potassium nitrate through sugar sacks. So clearly security checks have to happen. And Israel, remember, Israel controls three quarters of this rectangle. The, the Egyptians also have a blockade on Gaza because they also don't trust Hamas. So Israel is in a difficult bind. Like any country, it wants to protect its citizens. Like any country, it wants to live in peace okay, well, with let, the people in Gaza. Hamas does not want that. Let me put that point Let me just put that point Mr. Barghouti. Uh, Mr. Barghouti, Israel says it offers to distribute legitimate aid to, to Gaza. Uh, why do you think the pro-Palestinian activists won't agree to that then? I think Mr. Erdogan, in his speech before the uh, Turkish parliament, did a gesture and said something that reflected the feeling of uh, a growing feeling in the international community. He said, enough with lying. Exactly. This mendacity cannot continue forever. Now Ban Ki-moon, the European Union, and almost the entire world community is calling for Israel to end the siege illegal and immoral siege of Gaza. In fact, it's not just the siege. Israel continues with its occupation, building colonial settlements, building the wall, continuous but gradual ethnic cleansing in Jerusalem and the Naqab, the Negev Desert, and its full denial of Palestinian refugee rights. This is why BDS, boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel is growing tremendously. Swedish Dock Workers Union just decided to blockade cargo 
loading and offloading cargo on Israeli ships from June 15th to June 29th. The largest Norwegian uh, trade union federation, representing some 20% of the Norwegian population, decided to boycott Israeli goods, and it's growing more and more. Okay, now you're talking about an international situation there, so let's put that to Mr. Dixon. Uh, you're well aware that anger against Israel is swelling, even though the U.S. stops short of and what other countries are, are condemning. Uh, what do you think Israel should do to get the world back on its side? I think that there is empathy with Israel's position. Israel is a democracy um, that's trying to live peacefully and freely and wants to live in peace with its neighbors. Let me remind Mr. Barghouti, who says words like boycott, which are tremendously hateful. Uh, we have the opportunity to live in peace. There's a peace negotiating table there. The, our government has currently adopted a, a two-state solution. They want to live in peace with Palestinians. There's no one negotiating on the Palestinian side. Why can we not, instead of talking this hateful language, build things together because that's the point Israel is like any other country it has to have security checks if you were traveling through an airport you'd expect there to be a security check okay, because we don't okay, want terrorism okay. we, now, understand we, that. we understand that okay I'm afraid, I'm afraid we're right out of on time our border. we'll have to leave it there gentlemen both thank you very much indeed for joining us here on RT